Our reporter Zach Reff went along to a recent Sino-African summit in Beijing to ask African leaders there what they hope to gain from China. Earlier this month, Chinese Prime Minister Wen Jiabao pledged the equivalent of $10 billion in low-interest development loans to Africa over the next three years. This increased development aid comes as bilateral trade between China and Africa is expected to reach $100 billion next year. Meanwhile, it is estimated that there are now roughly 750,000 Chinese living and working across Africa. China's interest in the faraway continent of Africa is both economic and geopolitical. Thanks to years of rapid development and continuing growth, China has an immense need for natural resources, and the country is now looking increasingly toward Africa as a go-to destination for such raw materials. Places such as Angola, a south-central African country that is now China's number one supplier of oil, have become instrumental in fueling the Asian nation's growth. The arrangement between China and many African countries essentially goes like this. China offers a country low-interest loans and development help, including the financing and construction of local infrastructure such as schools and roads, in exchange for access to natural resources. These investments have improved the quality of life in scores of countries, and for many, these arrangements are a win-win situation. If a country gives you um, things um, like an infrastructure uh, and you, you know you need that infrastructure and your resources limits you from um, having such infrastructure and if the Chinese government decides to help you we would say thank you very much. Here at the China-Africa Industrial Cooperation and Development Forum, business leaders and diplomats are enthusiastically promoting the increasing ties between China and Africa. However, these connections are not without problems, and China's involvement in Africa often has a dark underside as well. China has drawn international criticism for supplying arms to both Sudan and Zimbabwe, countries which are both accused of numerous human rights abuses. Last year, in fact, China was widely condemned for sending a boatload of arms to Zimbabwe. Unlike many Western nations, China supplies development aid to Africa without making political or rights-based demands. China is uh, this policy of not interferences in political affairs. This is one of the strategies that Africa is, is, is getting and trying to avoid at all, all means interferences on political affairs. This hands-off tactic has disturbed human rights activists who accuse China of turning a blind eye to abuses so that it can maintain a steady supply of resources. Yet, just because China doesn't make political demands, this doesn't mean that its African partners are without complaints. China has the last word in many of these complex relationships, even selecting its own state-owned enterprises as contractors for some infrastructure projects and trade between China and many African nations is lopsided. The balance of trade itself yeah, uh, is no good for us because more, more goods are coming into Ghana yeah, uh, than we are exporting to China. And while China's construction projects across Africa have created thousands of jobs, many of these positions go to Chinese laborers and management who are brought in from abroad rather than to locals. They do take a little bit of uh, Sichuan manpower, however, most of it uh, Chinese. Still, many countries are hungry for development aid from China despite these imbalances. We have had worse situations than this with other countries. So why, why, why not? And while the relationships between China and its African partners aren't perfect, according to Mr. Amaral at least, they are mutually beneficial. Different countries, different behaviors, different interestings. And uh, I, I can assure you that there is not uh, best friend, but there is best interests. Best interests make good friends. Zach Ref, BON.